lives that we are in now, uh, they are not only evil times, but they are times that, we are, that, that are expected in the end times. The Bible talks about the end times. It's prophecy that is coming upon us. Prophecy is being fulfilled right now. And in the last days, the Bible says in the last days, all kinds of strange men and strange doctrines and strange things will begin to happen. People will begin to glorify the flesh. It will be about man, not about God. It will be about things that glitter, gold, not about eternal life. Things that have eternal value will be put to the background and the flesh will speak. And that is the essence of the Antichrist. That is what the Antichrist is all about in the first place. Having said that, of course, because the times itself is bringing up its own prophets, you know, along with it, uh, people have raised for themselves teachers because of what they want. Teachers that will preach what they want to hear. So we have all kinds of strange things that glorify the flesh, that glorifies man under the disguise of God taking place right now in our generation. I want to say this, but it is also in this time that the Bible talks about the glorious church rising. So, you see, there are two forces that are at work now. There is a glorious church rising up from the dust, from, 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 from what you are seeing right now. You know, there is a glorious church, a pure church that is springing out. They are still not well heard yet, but they are there. And this church eventually is going to overwhelm. This church is going to become the testimony of Jesus very, very soon. People will be able to differentiate them. But that's the area we are in now. It's a fulfillment of prophecy that we are going through now. The, the hallowed church and what I call the glorious church are being birthed by, side by side right now. But right now, it's like the hallowed church is overwhelming every other thing that you can see and they are promoting iniquity, but the tide is going to change very soon. The truth is that the present state of the church now, not just in Nigeria, but worldwide, is partly the fault of the fathers that were there before the present generation. The people learned the wrong things. They put materialism first, because the fathers emphasized materialism first. I mean, you have a situation where you want to be made bishop and you are told to pay 200,000 naira. You know, deposit 500,000 naira to be made a bishop. What example are you showing that man? In his days when he becomes a father, he will ask his sons to deposit a million naira. He will ask his sons to bishop. Two million naira. Now, all these are offices that in, do, in the days of the New Testament church, it came by calling. If you were called into them, they separated you to the Lord simply and released you. And what made people recognize those offices were the fruitfulness of the lives of the individuals that carried out this, you know, these callings. But now it's just the opposite. You buy it. It's not your fruitfulness. You maintain it by money. You maintain it by the affluence you bring around yourself. It's not how many fruits. So on one side, we have a dying world dying without help because there is no anointing for those who carry these big names to save them. They only have their affluence to bamboozle them to believe that God is moving. That is a tragedy. And that is why in these latter days, people without titles but manifesting the giftings of the Holy Ghost are going to spring out and they will turn around this time. But you see, it came, it, it was a gradual thing, it's a dispensational thing. You know, many, many years ago, the missionaries brought Christianity here. Generations came. But when the time of the move of the Holy Ghost baptism came, speaking in tongues, prosperity messages came. You see, the problem with Africa is that we try to copy the Hollywood style in America. We wanted to bring in Hollywood into our move, into the move of God in Nigeria, into the move of God in Africa. And that is really confusing us. If we, can celebrate, if we can separate some of these things, there are good things there we should learn, we should pick. I accept. I am picking some of them. But quite a number of things we are picking cannot flow in the, Amer in, in the African setting. They cannot work. It, they will become the tragedies of Africa. So the fathers now, the present fathers, like Oedipo, like myself, 
like uh, uh, um, Daddy Adibwe, like all the other fathers that we have around right now, Bishop Kumpo, uh, Pastor Ayo Richesafo. You know, if we if we can begin to emphasize that which is right, we may redeem another generation that is coming. Because by us, by our present dispensation, another generation is being born. You know, the Tunde Bakaris. Another generation is being born through us now. That generation is copying us. They are not copying the fathers that were there before us. You know, somewhere along the line, that generation got wind of the fathers that were there before. And those that were brought by up by those fathers are the ones grooming that generation now. And so that generation is bringing out nothing, you know, but unrighteousness, false standards, you know, false expectations, things that don't have eternal value, things that won't take people to, things that are not the emphasis of the Holy Ghost. And that's what the, the Holy Spirit is setting to work now to change around. And that is what is symbolized right now in our generation. Many people out there in ministry that are not supposed to be in ministry. Many of those who call themselves pastors, apostles, bishops, evangelists, they're not called into ministry. Many of them are just children of sons of circumstances. You know, they are circumstantial pastors and prophets. They, some of them were unemployed and they interpreted it to mean that God wanted them in ministry. Some of them failed in businesses and interpreted it to mean that God wanted them in ministry. They, some of them got frustrated. They, they didn't fail actually in businesses uh, or in the jobs they were doing. But because they could speak in tongues, cast out two demons, heal three sick people at a time, they felt they were called into ministry. No. You see, the Bible says that if you look at the, the scripture, the Bible says, you have not called me, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you might bear fruits. I have chosen you and ordained you and anointed you and poured oil into you that you might bear fruit. Now, the reason for anointing is fruitfulness. It's not self-promotion. Promotion comes from the heavens. Promotion only places you in the place of your destiny and makes you manifest in that place. It is not you who decides how you end. It is the oil that you carry that decides how you end. You know what men are trying to do now is the, decide for the oil how they end. Not align the anointing, the calling of God to bring them to where There were those that were ordained to be martyrs and they can't escape it. Their oils will bring them there no matter where they run. I stay in the north, for example. I can't run away from martyrdom if it has to come. Because my environment, look, I have survived nine deaths here on this seat. Now, I have not changed place. Because the geographical area where I come from has that kind of trouble that might call me to lay my life someday. So if in my calling and my oil, I am ordained to lay that life that others might be set free, I cannot escape it. You see, your oil brings you to prosperity. Your oil brings you to your end. It will, brings you to global dominion, global manifestation, global representation. But it was what was preordained for your oil that is supposed to bring you to where you belong. Not you choosing for your oil a destiny, which is what people are doing. People are trying to change their destinies. There is a book, I mean, in the book of Daniel, the Bible says that when God set up the thrones, I'll be reading that very soon because that is going to be the that, that is the centrality around which prophecy is operating now. Daniel chapter 7. The period we are in now is the centrality around which God is establishing righteousness and justice and turning around the issues and shaking in the whole nations. Now, if you look at that word, the word says, and the books were opened.